In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. Dear Serenarians, my dear faithful, today the Church wants us to celebrate the Feast of All the Saints. You see, especially you Serenarians, you see, every, mon every morning at Prime there is a liturgical book with a list of the saints, the saints of the day or of the following day. So to every day we have this commemoration of whom we have to, to venerate for the following day. But at the end, every day we say, and, and elsewhere there are, there are a great number of others, of the saints. And today, today the church wants us to look at them. We know, we know that there are many, a multitude. You hear, you heard in the epistle of today this impressive list of course, we have the list of the, we could say, the tribes of Israel. But the idea with this is to say there are so many, so many in heaven. We know, we know also, and that's the Catholic faith, that's our faith, who tells us that whoever dies in the state of grace will go to heaven. Same as whoever dies without the sanctifying grace in a state of mortal sin forever, forever is lost, eternal damnation, deprived from heaven. And it's not just a deprivation, it's the worst, the worst punishment. But add to this all those things which terrorize us and with right, all these pains which we can experience here on earth, which we know in hell and also in purgatory. They are a thousand times worse. All what we can experience as pain here, pain in our body, pain in our psyche, in our mind, They help us to fear, to behave. In the gradual of today, we say that those who fear the Lord, they will receive from God all the help. Those who look for God, they will too. So yes, there is a fear, a right fear, which is healthy, which helps us avoid these terrible pains, once again, which are eternal. Those once again, who die in the states of grace, if, if they have purified their souls enough here on earth, they go straight into heaven. And those that will be for tomorrow, those who still have something to repair, to satisfy, 
God gives them this opportunity, well, more than an opportunity, this possibility of purifying their souls as long as they have those little, the most little stain on their heart, they cannot see God. It's the faith who tells us that. Nobody, nobody can be in the presence of God if he still has the slightest thing the attachment of the slightest venial sin closes the door already. And what has not yet been enough repaired of our sins here on earth must be cleaned. That's for tomorrow. And these poor souls, we call them poor souls, they cannot do anything anymore to shorten it down. They are in a pure justice. But we can help them with our sacrifices, with our prayers. And once again, that's tomorrow. But from today, my dear brethren, the Church is granting you in indulgences plenary indulgences for a whole week the visit of a cemetery with just one little prayer the church is not asking you much a little prayer for the poor souls added to the common um, requirements which are confession in the we say eight days before, after communion and the prayer to the intention of the Holy Father. And this little prayer in in the cemetery, you win a plenary indulgence. Plenary means you can free a soul. This soul may have one more minute in purgatory. She may have 1,000 years in purgatory. Your little prayer there is going to free that soul forever. She will go to heaven, thanks to you. So visit of the cemetery, visit of the church today, prayer of the creed, the Our Father, Once again, not much, not much. Don't forget that. So easily, so easily, you can relieve souls from incredible sufferings by doing so little. Do it, please for the sake of these souls. But today, again, today the Church wants us to look a little bit higher, up, up into heaven. We want to rejoice. We want to rejoice with the angels about the glory of all these saints. They enjoy the beatific vision. They see God as God sees himself. And they enjoy. They enjoy this vision, the beauty, the perfection of God, as God is enjoying himself. It is so, so above, so above all what we can conceive all what we can desire. But God has told us that's what he wants to give us. That's why we are on earth. 
and looking at them, looking at them, we see they have made it. They are in heaven. They were our brothers, our sisters, mother, grandmother, god, grandfather, whatever. All these people around us. By the way, all. We hope many, many, as many as possible. Throughout the ages, you have these creatures like us, and they are in heaven. And we, of course, we, we are still here. We belong to the same church. Don't separate the church on earth, the militant church, from the triumphant. It's the same church, the one only church, with one only head, our Lord Jesus Christ. of whom the Holy Scripture says we are the flesh with flesh, the bones of his bones. Our head is already in heaven. We want to go there. Do we? Where are our preoccupations? What do we do here on earth? What do we do to go to heaven? Look around. Look around these hundred thousand billions of people around us. What do they do on earth? How many of them have that thought? I'm not here forever. My home is not here. My treasure is not here. My home. Who is homesick of heaven? Are we? Somewhere I read and it's very clear that it is correct. How many of us will have to do some purgatory because we do not desire enough heaven? We do not, do not desire enough what God has prepared for us. We do not desire enough God who wants to be our good, our final, our ultimate perfection. Look, look what moves us. Where are our preoccupations once again? What is moving us? Of course we are on earth. Of course we have full of preoccupations here on earth, solicitation, everything, so many goods we would desire here on earth, so many. And how many times do we reflect, hmm, this good, yeah, that's good for heaven. This one, no. How many times when we look for things, when we admire things here on earth, do we think about it? Where does our life evolve? Look at these saints. They made it once again. And they are in heaven. And they admire and they adore God. Yes. But they are also preoccupied for our salvation. They want to share it. They know what it is. The same as our garden angel. He sees God. He knows. He has to be with us. 
how many times a day, how many times a day, our garden angel must say, oh boy, looking at what we do. He sees God. But they can help us. And one of the part of this feast, yes, certainly, we want to venerate, we want to congratulate, to rejoice for them, but we want also to say, pray for us, intercede for us, help us. Let's go to the Blessed Virgin Mary, mediatrix of all graces. Let's go to her, our mother, mother of God. And God wanted her to be also our mother, mother of grace, mediatrix of all graces. All these graces which our Lord has merited and which make the day the saints in heaven. All these graces come to us through the Queen of Heaven, through our Mother. Let's go to her. Let's venerate her, Queen of all saints. Let's ask, beg for her protection, for her help, for our, her mediation, that one day, too, and forever, we may, united with all the saints, all the angels, praise, adore the glory of God, admire the beauty of the Holy Trinity, of our Lord, of all the saints. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Ghost. Amen.